history. The Silk Road becomes a kind of channel along which goods, people, ideas, armies, religions are moving back and forth. Trade booms, but also the flow of ideas. Ideas that'll transform the future of mankind. Damascus, Syria, four years after the crucifixion. A man is on the run, Paul. Preacher, troublemaker, and the most important convert in the story of Christianity. Before his conversion on the road to Damascus, he persecuted Christians. But now, he will turn an insignificant sect into a world religion. Today, he is known as Saint Paul. He was a passionate guy. He was a guy with grit. He really believed in his God. He really believed in his gospel. Really believed in, uh, that Christ uh, was, uh, was, the, was the only way. For spreading the message that Christ is the Messiah, Paul is a wanted man. To Jewish leaders, he's a heretic. To the Romans, a rabble-rouser. If caught, he'll be executed. Damascus is a walled city. Every gate is heavily guarded. Paul's escape route, over the walls. For 20 years, Paul travels the Roman Empire, contacting other believers, spreading a message of hope. He's telling people Christianity creates a salvation for anyone. If you have a, a slave who's being abused by his master, who has a horrible life, in the next life, his master will get what he deserves, and a slave, if he's a good man who accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, will get what he deserves. Paul writes letters to fellow Christians around the empire. Romans, Thessalonians, and Corinthians. They make up nearly half of the New Testament. There is no longer Jew or Greek, slave, slave or free, male or female, male or female, for all of you are one in Jesus Christ. We who are many are many one are body one in body Christ. In Christ. Love, is patient. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Those letters become very much like the Twitter tweets that we see during the Arab Spring. This was the communication of the time, and it was very much under the Roman radar. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned as a child. Paul's letters are entrusted to other believers, who deliver them across the empire. When I became a man, I put away childish things. By this time, Rome has built a quarter of a million miles of roads, enough to circle the earth 10 times. Shipping lanes connect 250 major ports. This is how Paul spreads the word. So faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The story of early Christianity really speaks to the power of ideas. That is what creates history. That's what changes people. That's what makes civilization. It's ideas. It always starts with ideas. A hundred and fifty years later, on the outskirts of Carthage, one of the largest ports in the Roman Empire. 
A group of Christians meet in secret. Private houses double up as churches. Early Christianity was a religious movement for the extremely poor, for the slaves, and for many women. Basically, anyone who didn't have a voice in Roman society could find a voice in the Christian movement. Across the empire, eight million people are slaves with no rights in Roman law. 30 million are women who can't vote or hold public office. Among them, Perpetua. 22 years old, a new mother, and a subversive. A year earlier, an imperial decree made conversion to Christianity illegal. Converts like Perpetua are now enemies of the state. Their crime, refusing to honor the Roman gods. You had to be a little bit crazy to be a Christian. It was enough to get you killed. Because you were saying your allegiance was to Christ and to his father, and not to the emperor. You would have been always looking over your shoulder, like, you know, is someone following me, or, or uh, is some, does someone know I'm a Christian? You would have been paranoid, and you would have been kind of afraid to really talk to anyone openly. The Empire's secret police, the Frumentari. They use a network of informers to hunt down dissidents. Perpetua is charged with treason. She's sent to prison to await her fate. She keeps a diary, the earliest words that still survive, written by a Christian woman. I am not to fight with beasts, but against the devil. And I know that victory is waiting for me. The ultimate test for any believer, to die for your faith. Christian dissident Perpetua faces a horrible death in the arena at Carthage. Christians are thrown to wild animals, or covered in tar and burned alive, or beheaded. But Perpetua can still save herself if she makes an offering to the Roman gods. The Romans come to these people and they say, look, you're stirring up trouble for us. Make some public declaration that says you're not against the state. Admit that the emperor is a god, and that'll show that you're OK. Perpetua's family visits her in prison. She's allowed to nurse her baby. Her father pleads with her to back down and accept the Roman rules. Daughter, he said, have pity on me. Do not abandon me. Have pity on your baby. Give up your pride. I tried to comfort him, saying, it will happen as God wills. A real Christian can't denounce their religion. 
They can't do it in public, they can't do it in private, they can't do it in their heart, they can't do it at all because they will burn in hell forever. That's the belief. Imagine how profoundly courageous one had to be. To put your life on the line and say, yes, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. The courage to do that, that simple act, speaks volumes about the power of faith. According to her diary, Perpetua goes willingly to her death. Her courage inspires one of the prison guards, a man called Pudence, to convert. Thousands of Christians are executed. become known as martyrs. But the more Christians the Romans kill, the more popular the religion becomes. In 100 years, the number of followers grows from 200,000 to 6 million. One in 10 people in the empire is Christian. From North Africa to Britain, the religion becomes so common, all laws against it are lifted. And then, a watershed moment. The year is 337. The Emperor Constantine is dying. He makes a decision that will shape the future of the Roman Empire. The time's arrived I have long hoped for, with an earnest desire and prayer, that I might obtain the salvation of God. The most powerful man in the Western world is baptized. For hundreds of years, Christianity was being quelled and put down by the Roman Empire, even persecuted. Now it's okay to be a Christian. Once Constantine is baptized, the whole empire then shifts towards Christianity, and then anybody who wants a stake in it, politically and economically, needs to be a Christian as well. A new Christian capital rises in the east of the empire, Constantinople, today Istanbul. At its heart, a church larger than any temple in Rome. Hagia Sophia, the Church of the Holy Wisdom. Today, there are 2.2 billion Christians, nearly a third of the world.